Hi there, this is Physics Chapter 1, Physical Quantities and Measurements. Lesson 5, Measuring Lengths with Vernier Calipers. Now, in this video, I will try to help you understand how we can use the Vernier Caliper to make measurements. Now, before we jump to that, let's have a look at some of the properties of a Vernier Caliper again. Right? In the previous video, we mentioned that a Vernier Caliper is ideal for measuring objects with lengths from 2 to 10 centimeters long. Also take note that some calipers actually are designed to measure in the unit millimeters instead of centimeters. However, both of these, whether they are in centimeters or millimeters, works the same way. Now, the third point is very important. Let's take note of this and recall and remember this. Accuracy of a vernier caliper, if it's designed in centimeters, it is able to give us readings accurate up to two decimal place. In a centimeters. If it's a vernier, it's a vernier caliper that is designed in millimeters, it can give us up to one decimal place accuracy. In this slide, let us have a look at some of the important parts of a vernier caliper. There are five of them actually, right? So let's look at some of the major parts here. The first part I'd like to show you guys is actually this out, this a pair of jaws known as the outside jaws. Others may actually call it the external jaws. Both of them, they mean the same thing. The use of the external jaw or the outside jaw is meant for us to measure external diameters. For example, for this case, which is a measuring cylinder, we can use the outside jaw to measure the external diameter of the cylinder. Now, this pair of jaws, which are located at the top, smaller in size compared to the outside jaw, is known as the inside jaws or the internal jaws. Now, this pair of jaws are specially designed to allow us to measure the internal diameter of a container. For this example, again, we are using a measuring cylinder and we can actually use that to this inside jaws to give us very accurate reading of the internal diameters. We can't really do this accurately with, um, for example, a meter ruler or a micrometer. The third part is this part known as the tail. Okay. The tail is specially designed to give us measurement of how deep an object is. By pulling this out, we are able to place this tail into a container and therefore allow us to find how deep that container is. Now, the fourth part that is important in the, on the vernier caliper is this set of lines that we find on its long body. This set of lines are known as the, as the main scale and we can find this similarly on a meter ruler. And the last part are these markings which is found on the bottom part of the vernier scale. These markings with lines on them, this is known as the vernier scale. And this vernier scale can be slid along the whole length of the vernier caliper. Now let's have a look at how we can make use of the vernier caliper to make measurements. Right, so let's assume that we have a ball bearing placed between the external jaws. All right. The diameter of the ball bearing that we intend to measure is given by this red color arrow. Interesting enough, when we slide open the vernier scale, the zero of the vernier scale actually moves away from the zero on the main scale. And the length or the diameter of the ball bearing in, is similar to this particular distance here given between the zero of the main scale and the zero of the vernier scale. Right. So, in other words, we can imagine that the ball originally that's being placed between the outside jaws are now being placed between the zero of the main scale and the zero of the vernier scale. So in other words, we can imagine that the that ball bearing, the diameter stretches from the zero on the main scale all the way to the zero on the vernier scale, like this. In the next slide, we will attempt to see how we can actually measure the diameter and read the readings on the vernier caliper. Okay, now this is uh, where we are. So the diameter that we are looking for is given by this arrow. And as we mentioned, this diameter is similar to the distance measured from the zero on the main scale to the zero on the vernier scale. So if we stretch this out, this is where the object reaches. And if you look closely, we can tell that the length of the object exceeds 3.1 centimeters, which is this marking. Okay, so 3.1 centimeter is this minimum length of the object, which we are 
very sure about. We call this 3.1 centimeters the mean scale reading. Take note then, there's this missing length of the object. This missing length indicated by the blue line can be found by looking for some markings on the vernier scale. And the technique is this, one of these markings will meet another mark on the main scale and when both of them meet, they will line up beautifully to make one straight line like this. The fourth marking on the vernier scale meets this particular line or this marking on the main scale and they line up very nicely over here. Take note, other markings do not achieve the same result. For example, the first marking on the vernier scale, right? It does not meet another line and form a beautiful straight line. Neither does the second, third, fifth, sixth, and so on. Since we now know that it's the fourth marking, this fourth marking is interpreted as 0.04 cm. This 0.04 cm is known as the vernier scale reading. So once we sum up the main scale and the vernier scale reading, we get the full diameter of the ball bearing. So 3.1, we sum that with 0.04 centimeters, that will give us 3.14 centimeters. Now let's practice. On the next, on this particular slide, okay, we see a vernier caliper that is used to measure in the unit centimeters. The length of this rectangular object is given from here, 0 on the mean scale to the 0 on the vernier scale. So the mean scale reading, as you can see, it is minimum of 1.10 centimeters. How about the vernier scale reading? So let's have a look at some of the markings on the vernier scale that makes a beautiful line with another marking on the main scale. So which marking is that? So as we go down the vernier scale, we find that the ninth marking makes a beautiful line with another marking on the main scale. So hence, we look at the vernier, we read the vernier scale as 0.09 centimeters. Summing both of these will give us the actual length of the rectangular object. That is 1.19 centimeters. Okay, on the next slide, we have two more um, examples of vernier calipers. All right, these are similar in your notes. Okay, so let's have a look at the one at the top. Again, take note, this measures in centimeters. So what is the main scale reading for this case? The zero on the vernier scale is at this particular position. Therefore, the main scale reading can be read as 1.60 centimeters. How about the vernier scale? Recall again, the vernier scale is the mark is given by the mark on the main on, on the vernier scale actually that makes a beautiful straight line when it meets with another mark on the main scale. So if you look at it carefully, it is a 6 marking and therefore the vernier scale reading is 0 0.06 cm. Summing them, we get 1.66 cm. On the next one, how about the mean scale reading here? Okay, the 0 on the vernier scale is at this particular position. Right, so the mean scale reading is read as 3.00 cm. How about the vernier scale? Okay, so which of this marking makes a straight line with another marking at the top on the, on the main scale itself? If you look carefully, is it the first line, first mark? Nope. Second, there we go. The third mark on the vernier scale makes a beautiful line with another mark on the main scale. Okay, so the vernier scale is read as 0 0.03 centimeters, and summing up that will give us the length of 3.03 centimeters and that will bring us to the end of this video so i hope you have um, learned how to measure with a vernier caliper okay so always take note uh, we start off with the main scale reading followed by the vernier scale reading and the technique to read the vernier scale reading is always to look for the mark on the vernier scale which matches or meets another mark on the main scale and both of them line up to make a very beautiful line right and that's it. Thank you so much for listening.